final of the Warren Brands Hatch for the season opener of the Demon Tweaks Yokohama Low Cost Championship. Thanks very much, Anthony. Well, the cars are about to head out onto the circuit to the grid for the uh, first race of the weekend. Here's how they line up. It's Mark Burton and Jack Coveney, row one, ahead of Louis Wall and Ian Alley. Then Tim Penstone, Smith and Ben Powney from Thomas Gadd and Chris Pike. Whilst Tim Neat and Oliver Batten round out the top ten. An oversubscribed grid means that the field have been split into three groups, groups A, B and C. Each group races twice and they race against each other group once. So this race is for groups B and C. Uh, the uh, next race will be for C and A, uh, and then A and B will go together. So everyone races each other once, and you each get two races over the course of the day. Look here at some of the onboards ahead of the start of round number three of the championship. Away we go, and it's going to be a uh, bad start there from Tim Spen Penstone Smith by the looks of it as they rush up towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time, but uh, charging around the outside and into the lead, I think was Ian Alley there in card one. Yes, he was. Alley leads the way. Second place looks like the black, uh, sorry, the white car with the fluorescent yellow roll cage. That's Ben Powney. And then everybody else trying to be third. On the inside line, Mark Burton there. The red car does hold on to third, but from pole position, he'll be a little bit disappointed with that. So Alley leads the way. Powney second. Third place for Burton. And then everyone else trying to find a way in line as they drop down into Graham Hill Bend for the first time. 13 minutes plus one lap for all of the races this weekend. Looks like that's Ben Poundy there, the orange car, who is in fourth position as they stream their way through Surtees. Mark Burton leads the championship, incidentally, after two races at Castle Coombe to start off the season a few weeks ago. He's got a ten-point lead over the man there with the Union flag livery car, Tim Penstone-Smith, who has not had a great start as the leaders are about to come through. And look at the traffic that they're going to negotiate now. I think we might possibly be going on to the final lap of the race here. And Ben Powney makes his move. Up the inside he goes. The last lap board is out. And has Ben Powney timed this right? He's up the inside into Paddock. But Jack Covney is going to be looking for the slipstream. They duck and dive inside and outside of the back markers. Powney goes to the outside of the number 41 car there of Keith Malpas. Up the inside went Covney, but it will be Powney that hangs on. They've just gapped slightly Burton and uh, Wall now, so it could be down to these two. But is Powney going to be a sitting duck when we get out onto the pit straight? You would imagine that would be the case. Jack Covney really just needs to sit behind him and wait till we get to the final corner. As long as, of course, the two cars behind don't latch back onto his tail and make life difficult through Surtees. This is going to be interesting. Can Ben Powney hang on? He's absolutely on. It's the first lap he's led all race, and it could be the money lap. Out of the final corner they go. Covney's wide. Covney's sideways. That's it. That's done it. Surely Ben Powney will have much more momentum out onto the pit straight. And Ben Powney is going to win race number one of the weekend for the Demon Tweak Choke Harbour Low Cost Championship. It is just about Jack Covney in second. Burton is third. And Louis Wall fourth. Look at the rest of them all streaming through, fighting for the uh, positions outside the top five. But it's Powney that wins from Covney, Burton, Wall. Penstone Smith is fifth ahead of Tim Neat sixth. Oliver Batten seventh. Chris Pike eighth. Thomas Gadd ninth. And Jeff B in 10th place. Then it's Sean Brame, Lee McNamara, McNamara Ian Alley, dropped all the way down to 13th after that spin ahead of Glenn Boyer and Clyde McKenzie. Outside the top 20, Colin Marshall, Keith Malpas, Trevor Faunch and Leo Hara. The only retirement was Richard Jenkins, whilst David Jones, Tom Robinson and David Johns never started the race. Ben, what a scrap. <laughs> I don't think you're going to hold on to it on the last lap. Yeah, I saw, um, I think there's a couple of backmarkers going into uh, Paddock and I could see Jack was close. And I thought, I've just got to go now. I knew it was the last lap, I saw the board, and then had to get round one and then dive for the inside. I know what he's like, he'll be there, so it's good fun. Jack, considering uh, you uh, changed your engine at 2 o'clock this morning, so you had lack of power all through the race, there's 11 people fighting for first, second place is pretty good. Uh, I can't complain, I'd have taken that this morning if you'd offered it to me, because I turned up for qualifying, not going to be clear if I don't have any power or not. And luckily it was just good enough to uh, sit in the toe, but not much more. I spoke to you before the race, you were slightly apprehensive, you still got a novice sticker on the back of your yeah, car. Yeah. It does look like it from where I was stood. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good race that was. Um, TSR, they worked against me to, to slipstream past and bump draft, which is what I said, you know. Race two for the Demon Treats Yokohama Championship is about to get underway. As you can see, we're down here in the Holden area. We've got 28 cars all ready to take to this short indie circuit around Brands Hatch. And if race one's anything to go by, it should be a riot. So, Andy, over to you. Yeah, thanks Anthony, looking forward to this one. We've got some of the same drivers out for this as we had in race one, and we've got the other group joining in as well, group A. So it's Jack Covney and Matt Grow on row one together, ahead of Ian Alley and Martin West, then Ben Powney and David Winter, Chris Pike and Peter Wood, 
Oliver Batten and Gregory Smith round out the top 10. 29 cars once more will take to the track. Groups C and A this is. So we had B and C before, so it's Group C's second race of the weekend. Group B's first race of the weekend. And we have our race one winner, Ben Powley, starting fifth on the grid for this one. Keep an eye on him as the red lights go out. We're away and racing for 13 minutes plus one lap. It's another good start made by Ian Alley. He made a good start at the start of uh, his first race, but he can't quite get to that outside line that he used so effectively in uh, race number one. So it's going to be Coveney on the inside. Around the outside, Matt Grow will take the race lead. Uh, and as he comes out of Paddock Hill Bend, up the hill towards Druids, I think he's just about got in front of Coveney to uh, hold on to the position. Yes, he has. Coveney second, third place for Alley. There is the orange car of Ben Powney, race one winner, uh, diving up the inside uh, through Druids gaining another position as they make their way down the hill. Oliver Batten there tried to make ground on the outside line. Matt Grau leads the way as they come through across the start finish line. On board here with Gregory Smith. The last lap board has indeed gone out. So Gregory Smith, I think that's Oliver Batten in front of us now, so he has lost that position. We saw him defending so vigorously early on. Closes in going to Paddock Hill. Ben goes up the inside of Oliver Batten. Oh, there's contact! Oh, no! And Gregory Smith into the gravel trap and a rather unceremonious end to his race. And I don't think he's best pleased about that. <laughs> you don't have to be an expert in body language to realise that, do you? That was uh, all rather unfortunate. It went up the inside, the door closed and contact was made. No contact for this man. It's been a much easier time of it in race two uh, for uh, Ben Powney, who is making his way through the final turn. And he is about to see the chequered flag. And he is going to win the second race of the weekend here at Brands Hatch. Ben Powney, his first win of the season, and that will do his championship hopes the world of good. Victory goes to Ben Powney here at Brands Hatch, and then we wait, and we wait, and we wait for a side-by-side -side battle for second. Six seconds behind the leaders they were, but Ian Alley does come home second with Martin West third, David Winter fourth, and Matt Grau in fifth. Chris Pike did get past Jack Coveney in the end, who finished sixth and seventh, respectively. Sean Brain was eighth, Peter Wood ninth, and Jeff Peake in tenth. Then it's Oliver Batten, after that contact at the end there, David Mason, Dave Berry, Glenn Boyer and Barry Stewart rounds out the top 15. Outside the top 20, Kevin Straw, Craig Land and Keith Malpas, whilst we lost Gregory Smith, Lee Dolby, Stephen Wright and Jack Johns. Second place with such a grid behind you. Congratulations, it could have been easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. And Martin was definitely pushing hard. Uh, me and Martin are good friends and I think he might have pushed. He just let me off a little occasionally because he's my mate and he didn't, nobody wanted to end up in the gravel, did we? We just didn't want to be fixing cars, did we, in this heat? Just like ready for a cider. That wasn't easy, but a podium at the end of it, got to be happy. Um, yeah, it would have been nice if we had the second. I had a couple of opportunities. I could have probably slung it up the inside of Ian, but it was only going to end in tears and for an extra couple of points, it's never worth the risk. So I'll bag what I've got for the time being and we'll carry on to the next one. This should be a cracking encounter. Matt Grow on pole from Mark Burton, row one. Martin West and Louis Waller on row two. Ahead of David Winter and Tim Penstone-Smith. Then Peter Wood, Thomas Gad, Gregory Smith and Tim Neat. Some quick drivers there towards the back end of the top ten groups. A and B this is. So we have uh, the second and final race of the weekend for these two groups. And the red lights are on. The black car of Grow on pole. The red car of Burton alongside him. Lights out. Away we go. And it's Burton who gets the jump. And he will grab the early advantage down towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. There's the Union flag car of Tim Penstone-Smith in the middle of the group as well. And Mark Burton, third place in his first race earlier on. He grabs the early advantage here. Here's Tim Neat, who was running well in the first race of the weekend before dropping back late on to finish sixth. He'll be looking to try and break into the top five this time around. And towards Druids they go. Back out and down the hill. And Tim Penstone-Smith there, side by side with Thomas Gadd in the black, grey and green car. But there we see the number 26 machine of Mark Burton leading the way. Matt Grow is there in uh, second place. I think it was Martin West third. Yes, it is. The black and gold car. As they come into the left-hander at Surtees. Penstone Smith side by side again there. Uh, number 22, Louis Wall is in this group as well. Louis uh, arriving here at Brands Hatch. A joint third in the championship actually with Ben Powney. Well, Ben Powney has uh, won a race this weekend and he's finished, um, in fact, he's won 
two races this weekend, beg your pardon. And so it's uh, looking good for Ben to potentially move through into the championship lead. Of course, the championship leader coming into this weekend, though, was Mark Burton, who's leading this race. All three abreast. That's getting dicey. On board here with uh, Vicky Baldwin a bit further back. Vicky's got a slightly calm time for things as she turns her way through Paddock Hill Pend. It's sort of kicking off in front of a look, but uh, there was plenty of entertaining stuff going on further up the road. Into Druid, a bit of a lock up. Look at the ducking and diving going on. Once you lose a place in most forms of motorsport, you sort of take a lap or so just to take stock of the situation and try and limit the damage done. In low cost racing, if you lose a place, you try and get it right back, not at the next corner, just later on round that corner because you can overtake at pretty much any part of the track. Well, through Surtees and McLaren we go again. There is the number 35 car of David Winter trying to challenge the number 12 of Thomas Gadd to grey and green cars together. Tim Neat's got himself onto the podium, by the way, and Tim Penstone-Smith has disappeared right the way down the order, so he's had a moment somewhere. But who is going to take the final victory of the weekend in the Demon Tweaks Yokohama Low-Cost Championship? Martin West leads the way. Second place right behind him, though, is Mark Burton. I think Martin might just have done enough here. He's got a decent gap coming out onto the pit straight. Burton is in the toe. He is closing, you know, it's going to be close. He's going to pull out of the slipstream, side by side to the finish line, and it is a photo finish which is taken by Mark Burton by three one hundredths of a second. Mark Burton is your winner. What a race that was. Burton the victor, Martin West is second. Tim Neat comes home in third place. There's confirmation of the result. Fourth is Thomas Gadd. Fifth, David Winter. Sixth at the end for Matt Grow. He'll be disappointed. Seventh, Gregory Smith. Eighth, Louis Wall. Ninth, Peter Wood. And also disappointed with tenth will be Tim Penstone Smith. He was on the podium a few laps from home. Then it's uh, Gary Brandon, David Mason, Rob Apsey, Dave Berry, and Carl Rusinars who rounds out the top 15. We lost from that race only two drivers, Lee McNamara and Stephen Wright. But what a show was put on by all in all three races today. But a photo finish to round out the day's action is only fitting. Well, Mark, it's turned into a pretty successful weekend for you, a third and a first. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, fantastic weekend for me. Uh, the closest rival in the championship at the moment is Ben Powney. He had two wins today, so a win and a third. I was a little bit ahead, so I think we're pretty close now. So very, very happy with that, yeah. It's going to yeah. be an interesting season. It's going to be very close, very close, yeah. I think it's always close in Locusts, but this year even more so. There's a lot of, um, a lot of very fast cars and drivers this year, yeah. Hello and welcome to Escorting Brands Hatch for the second meeting of the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship. Now the Formula V Championship is a very cost effective way of getting into single seater racing with the engine, gearbox and running gear all coming from a VW Beetle which means it's a spare parts and very cheap. Now the first round was at Castle Coombe, Ian Buxton took a win as did James Harridge. But it's Buxton who leads the championship and he starts on row four of the grid. Thanks, Anthony. Here's how that grid lines up then. It's Ben Maloudi on pole alongside Craig Pollard, then Daniel Hanson, James Clennell, Peter Belsey and Andrew Cooper, and then Ian Jordan and Ian Buxton. Chris Goller and Graham Gant round out the top ten, then Paul Taylor and Steve O'Toole to watch fourth in the sixth row, ahead of Morris Gloucester, Sam Engineer, Rory Mellier and Neil Aldridge. Further back down the order, want to definitely keep an eye out for at the back of the grid is James Harridge, who won the opening round of the championship last time out, despite winning in a car that's entered into Class B. He's the blue car you can see right at the back of the field. 29, Formula V is about to head toward Paddock Hill Bend for the first time in this third round of the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship. Lights go out, away we go. Great start there, made by the blue car of Daniel Hans, who will launch through from third on the grid to potentially lead into Paddock Hill Bend, no, he'll get second though, but a wheel banging further back, but it will be, I believe, Ben Maloudi, yep, who leads them down the hill for the first time, Daniel Hintz there, hands up there on the inside of Craig Pollard for second place, they head towards Drews for the first time, basking, it's very, very close indeed, and these wheels stick out an awfully long way from the bodies, it's so easy to tangle them and end your race on the spot, on board here with Ian Jordan, then in the Sheen Jordan, heading down towards Graham Hill Bend, on the outside line, he's out on the dirt, diving on the inside there was Ian Buxton, who had had a race win also last time out at Castle Coombe and a second place in the first race, meaning that he is our championship leader arriving here at Brands Hatch. He's one to keep an eye on. 
before there. Ian Jordan also one to watch for second in race one at Cooper, then had a non-finish in race two, which is why he's not a factor at the moment in the points. But there's a long way to go in the season as we're side by side for the race lead. Up the inside is Craig Pollard trying to get the lead away from Ben Maloudi. Maloudi has the outside line and a bit more momentum, but he's late enough on the brakes. Look at this though, four of them absolutely together up the inside comes Daniel Hans there in uh, third place trying to fend off the uh, the green machine there of Peter Belsey as we're on board with Ian Jordan look sorry uh, with Ian Buxton looking to try and find out which way to go side by side in front of us Belsey on the outside gets shown the edge of the road there by Daniel Hans that losing momentum so up alongside comes Ian Buxton into a uh, Graham Hill bend and I think he'll go through yes he does so fourth place now for Buxton not bad having started eighth on the grid and we're only a lap and a half into the race now towards the left-hand research is the yellow machine there, now starting to uh, join in the fun as well. That's Graham Gant, who started 10th, and so lots of drivers making good progress on the order, but this is the sort of racing we've uh, grown accustomed to over the years in the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship. You would imagine he's aware of the smoke screen that he's leaving behind him but as far as he's concerned it's not being told to pick to fix it and the car is not breaking down on him then why stop he may as well carry on because even the, the worst that can happen is he breaks down on the last lap but the best that could happen is he could take the race lead because with a slower car there rather getting in the way that was John Hartin who just couldn't get out of the way of the race lead quick enough through Panic Hill Bend that will possibly give Hans a chance to attack and a uh, wide line through Druids for Gant will also give Daniel Hans some hope that he could launch a last lap attempt to get through because we are now onto the final lap of the race out of Graham Hill where we go down the Cooper straight for the last time Hans looking to the inside there trying to distract Gant maybe make him think that he's going to go for a move when he isn't through the left of Surtees the right hand kick of McLaren then onto the brakes into clear ways realistically the last chance to get through here but Gant is steadfastly defending the inside line Daniel Hans looking for a better run out of the corner but we've seen that Gant's had a bit of an edge in a straight line over him all race long and that will be enough to carry Graham Gant home to victory Round number three of the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship. Another great race, though, from this ever-entertaining championship. Daniel Hans is second. Peter Belsey uh, will come home third. There, but some eight and a half seconds back. Fourth for Craig Pollard. And fifth place. What a result that is for the back of the grid. It is a race victory for Gant from Hans, Belsey, Pollard and Harridge, who wins Class B. In Jordan is sixth ahead of Christian Goller, Paul Taylor, Andrew Cooper and Steve-O rounds out the top ten. Then it is Morris Gloucester ahead of Sam Engineer, John Hartin, Jamie Harrison and Neil Aldridge. Then Alex Jones, Matt Topham, Mark Egan and James Cater. Uh, Vaughan Jones rounds out the top 20 ahead of Francis Twyman. We lost Ian Buxton, Richard Rainbow, Ben Maloudi as I suspected, then Bill Garner, Rory Mellier and Rick Lanyi all failed to reach the finish. Graham, what a hectic race! Congratulations. Thank you. That was uh, that was good fun out there. Um, I'm quite I'm quite surprised. Back on we had quite a poor qualifying with a lot of red um, flag incidents. I was back on row five, and really surprised that after three or four laps I was in the hunt and I, I thought this is going to be fun now and it really was. It was really good fun. A lot of oil went down, which made it very difficult. Um, I had I had some really good traction coming out onto the start finish line, which I think gave me an opportunity that probably uh, gave me the race win. To be honest, without that, we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have managed to to, to have overtaken Dan. So yeah. it was good. good well, Daniel, what a race! There was oil out everywhere. You had to keep your wits about you. But second place, congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it was uh, to be fair, really really fun race to drive. Um, really hard battle at the front with um, Ben and Craig. Those two are battling it out, not just sitting behind them. Um, sort of a lap three or four, a little bit of oil. Um, I sort of made benefit of that and um, took them both around one corner, gapped myself quite well. And then, uh, yeah, it was a, a really good race to be fair. I got caught up in the back markers, a little bit around paddock, um, which enabled Graham to catch me up. And then his traction off the last corner was so good, I just couldn't live with him. So uh, congratulations to him. But yeah, it was a really fun race. Peter, tricky race, but coming away on the podium, you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, frantic race. Uh, luckily, the, uh, the Formula V uh, drivers showed their class today and managed to avoid any incidents in what was some very close racing. Here is your grid for race number two of the weekend here for the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship. It is pole position for Craig Pollard alongside Ben Maloudi. Then it's Paul Taylor and Ian Buxton, James Clennell and Ian Jordan. Daniel Hanson, Steve O, oh, Andrew Cooper and Morris Gloucester round out the top ten. Ahead of Sam Engineer and Graham Gant, our race one winner, one to keep an eye out for. The other one, as ever, is James Harris, which went from uh, 29th on the grid to 5th in race one. He starts at the back again in this one, having not set a qualifying time, and so he will be looking to try and repeat the performance from the first race. Well, ben Ludi there, we heard saying that he hopes for uh, a less exciting race. There's no such thing as a... Uh, uh, 
boring Formula V race. And this one, I'm sure, is going to be equally as entertaining as race one. We're away in racing. On board with Peter Belsey, he's another driver who worked to do uh, from way back at 50 on the grid. Uh, before Peter came to finish third in race one, showing that that disruptive qualifying session really did mix the order up. On board here with John Harton in the AHS Challenge, making his way out of Paddock Hill Bend, back up the hill towards Druids. Cars to the left, that's the 75 machine diving around the outside, up towards um, Druids Corner. There's quite a bit of cement just down there, that's from an earlier race, some oil laid down, and uh, that will be creating some dramas for the drivers in the early game. But he needs to play Pollard in second place, uh, third place looks to be in Buxton. Fourth place then free in Jordan, and side by side for fifth, that's Daniel Hans trying to get up the inside of Paul Taylor. Didn't quite work. Daniel Hans, who looked on potentially for a race victory in race one, but then I think started running into some kind of collisions. We saw that smoke uh, coming out of the back of the car after he'd lost the race lead, but I'm fairly certain that that had something to do with him losing the lead in the first place. Side by side for the race lead, side by side for third as well. And in fact, a change for third place there around the outside goes Ian Jordan to take third away from Ian Books to Ian's swapping places. But at the front, it is Craig Pollard back into the lead ahead of Ben Balloonie, who comes right back at him around the outside uh, into Druids. This is a battle that's going to run and run, I think, all race long. We didn't see the contact that uh, Ben Baludi suffered with a back marker in race one that put him out of contention, uh, but uh, that is a shame. Not the way that he wanted his weekend to begin. Ben, who didn't race at Castle Coombe even to start the season off, so uh, already that was a dint in his championship hopes. But uh, here he is at Brands Hatch trying to bounce back, and he tangles up with another car from Paddock Hill Ben. He's been second in this one, and as we saw in race one, really it's not, you don't have to too much about hitting the front early doors because the likelihood is that the lead is going to change hands several times over the course of the race. Great Pollard defending there from Ben Ludi has his hand out of the cockpit to warn of yellow flags is it or is this a red flag situation no green flags back out of druids but pollard is slow out of the corner and gets himself alongside so not quite sure what was going on there there were hands out of the cockpit left right and center blue has got through it now the red flag does come out so that will be interesting because the was in front at the time the red flag went out neil aldridge there it is who was in the gravel trap then and it's his car that got beached that has brought out the red flag so now we try this again then, we have a shortened race now uh, as a result of that red flag coming out part way through the first encounter, we're away and racing and Maludi and Pollard get a very evenly matched off in the front row of the grid but my money here is on Graham Gant because with a top five grid position essentially now he's caught right up to the leaders and we know he's quick, he's going to be one to watch for I think in the uh, uh, yellow uh, number six car, there he is, you see him in the middle of the pack, you can't really miss him, can you, just behind the side by side, Daniel Hans and Ian Jordan, fairly calm and comfortable start to the race though, and it is Baludi that has the lead, Pollard second, Jordan third, fourth is Hans, fifth is Gant, sixth is Belsey, Gant there out onto the grass, oh Ian Buxton out onto the grass further back as well, he's had a dreadful restart, but has Ben Baludi been able to build up enough of a margin now to hold on to the race lead? Out of Graham Hill, Ben, they go along the Cooper Straight for the final time. Ian Jones runs a bit, sorry, Ian Jones there runs a bit wide. I'm surprised in a way that Gant and Belsey haven't really let their way up onto the tail of this leading group. But uh, looks as though Ben Baludi might just be able to do enough here to hang on. Craig Pollard's going to have to try and defend this second place from Daniel Hans for all he's worth. The run to the check of the flag begins, but it is going to be a victory in round number four of the Heritage Park Centre Formula V Championship for Ben Baludi. Ben Baludi takes his first win of the year. Second place will go the way of Craig Pollard. A late drama, I'm afraid, there. That's the number 75 car of Mark Egan, who has tangled, I think, with John Hart in there at the final corner make the finish. So Maludi wins, Pollard in second, third for Hans, fourth for Jordan with Peter Belsey fifth, then it's James Harridge uh, in sixth place, Paul Taylor seventh, Andrew Cooper eighth, Christy Collar ninth and Boris Gloucester rounds out the top ten. Then it's Alex Jones, Sam Engineer, Graham Gant dropped down to 13th on the last lap, don't know what happened there. Then Richard Rainbow, Rory Mellier, Ian Buxton, Jamie Harrison, Rick Lanyi, Francis Twyman and Matt Topham round out the top ten. A whole host of cars that didn't make the finish. Many of these of course went out before the red flag came out. And you're only taking part in uh, this weekend, this season and I can see how much that meant to you going over the line. Your hands were fist pumping in the air, well done. Yeah, I was quite uh, quite relieved to uh, cross the line for, uh, for the win. Um, the, the lap before I missed a gear as we came across the start line um, so I was worried Craig was going to get me the lap before so um, I th I, well, I think I might have done a little bit of damage to the engine, so yeah, I was just glad to see the race stopped, apart from anything else. But um, yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of pressure when you're 
you've won things before and then you're coming back, there's a little bit of, you know, people are chasing you rather than you chasing them. I think it's, it's easier to chase than be chased.